Today, I'm going to show you how to get more realism out of your renders. Now, the big secret with getting really realistic renders is actually pretty simple, and that's using a photo reference. Studying things from real life is always better than trying to like come up with it on your own. When it comes to making your renders look real, the best way to get yourself to learn, understand, and apply what you learn is to do this exercise. So take a photo of something mundane, not overly complicated. And the important thing here is that you don't want to stage it beforehand. The light can be artificial or natural, but the reason we want to keep everything simple and mundane is because now you'll have to recreate it. You can model and texture everything by hand, but it's honestly faster if you use pre-made assets and textures. Even better if you can use photo textures because they sell the realism. But the meat comes from when you set up your render. Trying to match the camera angle, the camera settings, lighting, and composition. Here's where you'll start doing the comparison and spotting the differences between your render and the photo reference. And you will learn what's missing from your scene and what makes it look unrealistic compared to the photo. It's the camera angle, it's the lighting, it's the orientation of the objects and their relationship to each other. A lot of the time what makes renders look unrealistic to me, even if they have the best textures, the best detail and lighting, it's the staging. It looks staged and unnatural. Things are too evenly spaced, objects aren't interacting with each other, but we all know the things that are in our house are ours, and they have a relationship to each other. The way that things are scattered or grouped together says a lot about what's going on in the moment. This, I think, is one of the most important parts about setting up renders to look realistic. People are weird, and we have patterns and odd behaviors that not only make us unique, but also relatable. This is why I said earlier to take photos of things and spaces that were not staged. Just studying those photos alone will teach you a lot about staging realistically. It's also a great world building technique because it'll teach you how to dress your settings in a way that looks like someone lives within that world and is going about their day. So back to the render. I personally like making these little cable loops with charging cables. I noticed that I always put a cup right in the middle of them. I think it's just a weird like pattern thing. I like making things fit nicely together. But I know I do that, and seeing that in a render tells the viewer a bit about me or the person that uses these items. After you've got your scene set exactly like it is in the photo reference, we render it and then go into the next part. Understanding a bit of the camera and what it's doing will help your renders look real a lot more. When we take a picture with our phone, let's say, the phones are smart and they are doing a lot of post-processing to make the image less noisy, punchier, and overall more pleasing to the eye. Especially since the camera is still like a physical camera with like glass and stuff inside of it. It's susceptible to lens dust, to lens flares, and just to like overall noise and other imperfections. But that's good because we will take all of that recreate it, and then apply it to our renders to make them look like they were taking on a phone camera. So because a smartphone is trying to post-process the photo after it's been taken, it's actually fixing a lot of the things that we would normally be looking for. So for example, one of the most common things is chromatic aberration. That's this color kind of separation thing that happens at the edge of photos. Concept artists love adding this stuff to their images because it makes them look more cinematic. And because this is a cinematic effect, that's not really applicable to our video and to our demo today. But if you want to know how to make your renders look more cinematic, you can check out this other video on my channel. But if you're trying to make a render like this, either add it at a very, very minor, subtle level or don't add it at all. The next couple things have to do with the limitation of the camera sensor itself. So sometimes the shadows will be clipped, sometimes the highlights will be clipped, and then after that is like the noise. I've mostly noticed it in photos where it's like a dark area or low light. I don't really see it like in the highlights as much. So when you add that to your renders, make sure it's more visible in the shadowy areas. Also the compression artifacts, things like that, all great things to slap on your render the noise pattern in the phone camera though is different than like the standard noise pattern that you can make in Photoshop. So for example, when I take a picture in low light or in, in a completely dark area using my phone, you can see all the noise. 
Now, phones do this thing where even after the picture is taken of like a, a, just a purely dark space, it tries to clean it up. So it gets rid of a lot of that noise that we kind of want it to keep. We can either use the data from the picture because there's still artifacts and stuff there, which could be useful, or we can just get a screenshot of the raw noise and apply it directly to our render. After learning this, I wanted to try making a non-standard noise pattern in Photoshop because I like using Photoshop for the noise. It's really fast. One cool way to achieve this is by layering multiple noise patterns over each other to make it look realistic. Besides this, sometimes making it look even more amateur or blurry can fool the eye or adding harsher effects like VHS distortion or JPEG artifacts. Sometimes it's just the lighting that can make a huge difference. Like these spooky renders that I made, I have the lighting very limited. There's a lot you can do, but I hope that you've learned a lot here and I've equipped you with the knowledge and techniques to try in your work. As always, thanks for watching. And if you want to know more or see more, just let me know in the comments down below. I always check those out. Uh, this video is sponsored by, it's my patrons. The Patreon is what supports me working on this kind of stuff. So if you want to support more content like this, you want to just like get updates and get more behind the scenes type stuff, then that's the place for that. I'll also be dropping the project file from this video on Patreon. So if you want that, you want to poke around, th that'll be right there. But yeah, other than that, peace and bug grease.